What's up to those seeking the Lord? Welcome back or for the first time to Is God For or Against Me, where nothing that is biblical is taboo. All right, so in this video, I actually want to really talk about why, you know, a lot of women don't really understand uh, the nature of a man. And this video has actually come up, has came up because I was recently on a Facebook feed and there was a woman that posted in a group about how her husband isn't really being supportive in terms of what she's doing and you know of course you have everybody because it's a group so you have a lot of people you know providing some insight some helpful advice just their opinions or whatnot and i actually called myself you know trying to provide some insight and and really trying to help her to understand like why you know this husband isn't really being supportive and you know you have people on there making these blanket statements such as like you know he's the husband he should want to do this and actually that's the worst statement in the world um, a woman can actually make is he should want to want to do this you know he should want to want to do this that that is the worst statement any woman can make it's the worst expectation to actually have because it's going to actually lead to a lot of disappointment you know um, and I actually said that in my comment that you know he's not we're not really nurturing naturally we're, we're just not nurturing and there's this uh, the, the responses that guy got back were you know men should be nurturing what do you mean we're not naturally you're not naturally nurturing that's a cop-out no 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 we're not you we're not you okay men or not you ladies we're, we're just not okay now my biggest mistake actually was i was coming at this from a very carnal very worldly perspective because i really don't know what the woman's belief is so i didn't mention anything about jesus christ or anything biblical like that though i really wanted to but i i was just like you know what i really have to talk about this from a biblical standpoint because i have to stand on the bible in terms of my understanding and why men aren't this naturally nurturing you know person and that depends a lot up on their upbringing and what type of spirit god has placed on a man himself so really if i'm nurturing now because let me use myself for an example um you know i've always wanted you know i always knew i would have kids I always wanted a little girl i don't know why i can't really explain i just always did and when my kids actually came it actually took the spirit of the Lord and just Jesus Christ and a lot of biblical teaching and, and the counsel, the, the consultation of my wife to actually teach me how to be the husband that I am right now. You know, when I was growing up, you know, one of the key things that, you know, my dad wanted me and my brother to do was to be young professionals. And that's what we really focused on, you know, in terms of family and stuff like that. Being a natural family, man, that didn't really come to me. That that actually is taking work. It's taking a lot of work and it's still taking work. So really a lot of it's going to depend on your upbringing. A lot of people may sit up here and say, you know, where well, they had a good upbringing, his dad was around, he was caring, he cared for his kids. And see, that's another thing is because if that was the case, because that's a small minority of men that actually, you know, are like that. You know, and a lot of times men care a lot for their kids because those kids, they understand that those kids come from them. But a lot of the times they don't love you as the spouse or the wife. And even still, if that was the case, if we were very nurturing from the beginning, why is, it, why is there still a lot of absentee fatherism? OK, there's a problem there. And the problem is very spiritual. It's not carnal. It's not because the world has failed and we're going to hell in the handbasket. The Bible's very clear that that's going to happen. So what I'm actually going to do is there's this book that I'm going to recommend that y'all read. OK, um, I'm going to post a little picture up here. It's called The Help Me. All right. The book is called The Help Me. And it's by Pastor Maurice Walker. And there's going to be some things that I'm actually going to read from the book. Okay, there's actually a section that I'm going to come from. So let's go ahead and let's dive right into it right now. All right, so before I even dive right into the book, what I wanted to want to show everybody first is that on how they can actually get this book. Now, this is the actual website. It's livingwitnessmissionarychurch.com. All right, and the book, here is a commercial for it, so you can actually see what it's all about. It's by Pastor Maurice Walker. You can actually buy the print version for $5.99, get the ebook for $2.99, or you can simply just go down here and go to the Help Me audio and get a free email subscription for it. So you just click subscribe and you just simply put your name and email and it'll take you right to the page where you need to go to get the book. All right, so this is an electronic version of the book. So what I'm going to actually do is just kind of catch you up on what's been going on. 
um, in the first part of the book. And what it, what the pastor really talks about in this book to help me, because the book focuses on empowering women and helping them to get them to understand not only their nature and their place and why God made them, but to also help get a lot of women and ladies to understand like why a man acts the way that he does. What did we actually lose? And that's what we're going to actually focus on. What did we lose the moment that Eve ate of the fruit, ate of, ate of that fruit that God instructed her not to eat. Okay. When we actually come down here, I'm going to actually, um, read from right here, feeling confident that there was no danger or harm. She feels it is safe to present the fruit to the man. Okay. So this is at the time when the snake has beguiled the woman and told her to eat of the fruit, nothing will happen. Man receives the fruit and we are left to speculate why he ate of the fruit. There is no word that leads us to believe that she tricked him or that he did eat of the fruit because he felt that he was responsible for the woman. However, we become aware that he might have agreed with the reasoning instead of the word of God. Thus, man eats the fruit and both their eyes were open to the fact that they had done something wrong. So the minute that the man has eaten of the fruit, nothing happened when Eve ate of the fruit, but when the man ate of the fruit, like they noticed that they their eyes were they were super woke. Okay. That term gets that that term really has no real justice right now in today's world. Like people have been woke since 2011 and conspiracies and all that other stuff. Whatever. Adam and Eve were super woke. They knew that they had done something they had no business doing. They knew that they sinned. They knew that they were naked. So we shall, hopefully I'm, I'm saying this and, and understanding that you have some basic understanding of Adam and Eve. But if not, then this is what's going on. Um, the harmful change that they were warned about has happened. Man was experiencing death. Okay, He was now experiencing a spiritual death from within his spirit. This change moves man from abundant life to a life based on faith and later on jesus christ would actually come and restore that which is why we need to accept him because the word says he's come to give us life and life more abundantly he is the way the truth and the life this was a change that could only be seen with the spirit god had told the man that if he ate of the tree that he would surely die well god is true to his word when the man ate he lost eternal life so now we're we're in this realm of death for we went from switched over quickly from a life that will be a life of abundance and, and eternal eternity. Now we're in about death to now we're a temporal, we're in a temporal state. We're in a very temporary form at this moment in time. Remember that man was filled with the spirit of God. And this is important. This is the one thing I want people to understand. Okay. I want not only ladies, but men understand we lost something the minute that we ate of the fruit. The spirit of God is what gives life. The spirit of God had given the man something more than life. The man had been filled with God's character, but now a change has come within him. The spirit of God is not in him as it was in the beginning. He has acted out of the character of the creator. So us losing that spirit in the beginning. Okay. And you may, and ladies may ask, you know, do we actually do I still have the characteristics of God? Didn't I lose something when I ate of the fruit? Not necessarily. And I'm not going to go into details of that. I encourage you to get this book. At least listen to the free audio. That way you can listen to it on your drive to work, working out, in your passive time, cleaning. I usually listen to a lot of podcasts when I'm cleaning and audio books too. So that would probably be a best time for um, a lot of people. But that that's just me. But I'm not going to go into detail. But the answer to that question before it's even asked is no, you didn't lose some. You still retain something that we have lost in the beginning when Adam ate of the fruit. So if you're, you know, if you're calling yourself a Christian, you're a follower, you, you study the word of God, you have teaching and hopefully some good teaching, then you would know that we the the story of adam and eve it shouldn't be lost too much on you and the second paragraph goes he has lost the characteristics of god which god had given him from the creation these characteristics were called the likeness of god now he is living but without a fulfilled soul without the characteristics of god he will never feel as though God is with him. When this happens to man, he feels as though his life is worthless or that he is spiritually dead. This type of inward feeling would cause man to act strange. So I'm going to stop right there because that that whole the our whole desire a man wanting to always like have this sense of fulfillment wanting to get these achievements seeking achievement through fulfillment when we should be actually seeking our achievement and fulfillment um through the lord himself through a fellowship a relationship with jesus christ then that you know that is what's ultimately that's what's going to fulfill us that's what's going to bring about that true joy and that happiness um 
one of the key things here is too is like you know because both both genders men and and women we both need to come and accept um jesus christ because um to an extent man in our in our natural state and how we're supposed to behave we did lose we lose we lost that spirit okay but the fact that woman a woman came from the rib of man that rib was already baptized in the spirit of god there are some things that y'all retain that that when i say y'all i mean ladies retain that helps them to become more equipped to um you know bear children and that that's what and that's another thing that god has addressed man in terms of the curse that man should you know Put his attention to the till of the ground and women shall, you know, um, be saved through childbearing. Y'all come equipped with those certain things. We just we just don't. We just don't. You know, even when we um, I was watching Marvel Runaways and here goes a great example. Here goes a great example. If men were so nurturing, you know, when when children are babies, they're cute and, you know, oh, they have this innocence. But as babies get older, they become teenagers, young kids, adults, you know, that innocence of what we see for it in the beginning as innocence, it, our eyes tend to change. When I mentioned Marvel Runaways, like there's this guy named Victor on there and he, you know, he, he's looking at his child and he's making all these like comments, like, I know what it means now, the most precious thing. He says something like that. And then he has his son and his son is, you know, gotten like, he's taking him to a soccer game and, you know, um, the son is ragging on him now for not attending the soccer game. Well, what happened to that sensitivity? What happened to that sense of quote unquote nurturing that happened? You know, that, that it doesn't make any sense at all. So you, ladies have to understand that as men, you know, we're, we lost something and we're trying to get it back. And the only way that we're going to get it back is through the hope and fellowship of having the relationship that we can have with Jesus Christ, which is why it's very important for us to accept Jesus Christ in our life so he can guide us and he can actually show us how to be nurturing um, to our children, how to be, you know, close to and and very romantic and behave the way that we need to towards our wives. Because in the book of, uh, what is it? Is it First Peter? I think so. Let me go ahead and, and take a look. Let me, this may take some time. All right, so I found that scripture, Ephesians 5, 25 through 27 says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy without blemish. So I want to actually focus on this part where it says, even as Christ also loved the church. Now, I was in an actual Bible study where my pastor, like, we had to define, like, well, how, what did Christ do for the church? Like, what, what did he actually do? You know, and we went down and he provided this whole list. And the minute that he provided this list to, and this was, this was just for a study, just for men at the time, like, I immediately felt overwhelmed because it was like, I can't do all of that. Like, I can't, I cannot do all of that. And then the Lord immediately spoke to me, but with me, you can do all things. And I'm not doing this on my own. I'm, I have to remember that as a husband and a, and a dad myself, I'm not doing this on my own. I got married because of the Lord. You know, if I wasn't, if it wasn't for the Lord, like I'll probably still be running the streets, whoremongering. Like that's, that's just real. I probably would have found the woman that I temporarily would have found this emotional love with, but that would have subsided and I still would have just moved on and maybe made some mistakes and had more kids out of wet life, just spreading my seed everywhere, getting caught up in the emotional moment of like, oh, this child is so precious. I have another kid with this other different woman. And that's probably what what would have just happened you know but i prayed to the lord like give me a wife like i can't do this i'm tired of doing it my way i want to do it your way lord and it came at a time where i was trying to i was taking baby steps walking with the lord so um so that and that's that's just what it is so one of the things that you know we have to i, I i'm gonna go ahead and end this video by just saying this okay Understand that men are not equipped. If you expect a man to be naturally nourishing or naturally anything, you're going to disappoint yourself. You're going to disappoint yourself. Man, you just can't snap your fingers and tell a man to just man up. You cannot just sit up here and snap your fingers and tell a man to, you know, grow some big kahunas. You you can't do that. Men need to be they need to be taken by the hand. They need to be they need to be guided, you know. Um, it's, it's often that we don't talk. We, we do need to talk, but a lot of this stuff we need to learn and we need to put it in practice. If we could put it in practice, you can get us to actually see it and believe it. You'll actually have more success in terms of, 
you know, how a man should be. But if you're, I mean, if you're in a relationship and you know that, you know, man is abusive or anything like that, you, you can't stay in that relationship. And you, you just can't. For one thing is you have to, you have to pretty much make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to do according to the word of God. You know, a lot of my actions are guided by the word. I know that if I do something even out of character, it's the Lord that holds me accountable. I don't worry about my wife getting mad. Like I've seen her wrath a whole bunch of times and there's a lot of things I just won't do because of that. But, you know, before I even act on certain things, you know, that my wife will never know the light of data about is because the word that I've studied and I've been taught and I've put into action, I've seen and that keeps me from doing certain things. So I do have that restraint. So anyway, I didn't want to respond no more. I've already responded enough carnally in that Facebook feed that I was viewing. But in any case, take a look at the help me, you know, let me go back to that website. All right, so this is the website. Remember, it's livingwitnessmissionarychurch.com. I will put that. That will be plastered <laughs> within this video so you can see what it is. All right. Simply, like I said, if you want to, there's some articles here. Great church. Great, great church. Wonderful pastor. Word-led. Great teacher. This book here has helped me a lot in terms of understanding, better to help understand my wife and better understanding, you know, why things are the way that they are, but in terms of the roles of a man and a woman. So I, I, I highly recommend that, you know, if nothing else, even if you don't want to buy the actual print or ebook version, which is $5.99, $2.99, very, respect, very respectable, okay? You have to at least download, at least put your email in and get the audio book. And man, maybe there'll be some other content to come within the email subscription or something like that. This is what the pastor looks like, you know, kind of black guy, T.D. Jakes looking, I guess, in a way. So, um, but so you'll see that it's not me just promoting something I'm trying to sell or anything. This book is just amazing. You saw that I actually have the electronic book here on my own computer. All right, so um, that is it. I'll leave you with a question real quick. Do you agree? or not agree with what I've said in this video. This is a very simple question. Do you feel like men are should just be naturally nurtured or we come equipped with what's needed? You've seen it and actually I really believe what you've seen, you've seen in movies. And that's the problem. We confuse what we see in movies with the actual reality. You know, so and maybe the men that you have seen, you know, is this the exception to the rule, but majority out there uh, from what I could tell, a lot of people's stories are the same. My dad left at this early age, and where did they go? Where he left, but where did he go to? That's pretty much the story. And if you were, are in that small minority in terms of, you know, I've had, I've seen a good man around a good man, you know, then that's still a so Even if you've seen a, a, some good men, that's, that's still a small minority. And the question has to be asked, you know, what was different about them that made them you know, naturally or what appears to be um, natural dads and all these other sorts of things. So anyway, that's it. Is God for or against me? Thank you for watching. Have any questions, comments, leave them below. Check out things in the description. God bless y'all. I'll see you in the next video.